What's up, this is a guide on how to draw mathematical functions in DaVinci Resolve or Fusion. And we have a relatively simple setup right here. We have a background, which is black, and a foreground, which is white. And we have a custom tool in between, which is supposed to draw my functions. And what you can do immediately is you can go in here and you can enable all the number controls that I have enabled and disable the last one. Make sure you don't mess this up because they are addressed as an N1 to N7 and they will be referenced in here. Also, you can turn off all the point controls if you want then it should look exactly like it does for me. And you have seven inputs right here and you get to access them through all these tabs right here. And what happens first is we can enter something in here. For example, we can enter one divided by N1 and this will be calculated once per frame. So it'll just take whatever I have in N1 and it'll divide it by this. And then I can reference this number later and it doesn't get calculated every single pixel over and over for no reason. Now in the intermediate equations, I get to enter equations that run every single pixel. And for example, what I could enter in here is x. It would output zero along this vertical line and it would output one along this vertical line. And in between there would be some kind of a gradient. So if I go into the channels, which controls each individual channel on each individual pixel and I enter i4, which references my i4 equation, you can already see this start taking shape. And what you get is a gradient where you have a value of zero right here and a value of one right here. Now we need to modify this so that we can enter an equation somewhere in here and it outputs a function somewhere in here. It masks it out. Okay. First of all, what we will do is we will just try to create a white line across the screen. And the way we'll do this is with a, a quick Boolean and the, the things you are allowed to write in here, you can see in the reference manual, you don't just get to write code. You get to write mostly mathematical stuff. Okay. Now, if we enter y is smaller than 0.5, you will see that all of the values larger than 0.5 are zero and all of the values smaller than 0.5 are one. And wherever the value is one, the white background gets passed on and masked over my black background. Now we will just offset this to be a little bit higher. So we will do 0.51 and we will put some parentheses around this and we will add the same thing again, but only with a slight variation. This time we will do the other way around. So now all we have done here is if it's smaller than 0.51, which is slightly above the middle right here, then it is white. And if it's larger than 0.49, which is slightly below the middle, then it is also white. And then we multiply these, which means this will always be zero unless both of them are one. These are booleans, obviously, so they can only be zero or one. If y is either smaller than 0.15 or it's not. This has to be both higher than this lower bar and lower than this higher bar for it to be white. I hope that's clear. So now let's say I wanted to turn this into a function. How would I do that? Now, if you enter the logarithm in here, so for each individual x value, it'll calculate the logarithm of the x value and it'll ask itself, is that larger than the y value? And this basically modifies a horizontal line into this. Now, the problem with this is that I obviously want to control what's happening with this function right in here. And the way I've set this up, this isn't really possible, which is why this is an intermediate force so that we have some space in here so that we can modify this function so that we can stretch it and move it around without any of the aliasing problems that we would get if we would use a transform node. So now we need to modify this slightly. So first of all, we need to ask ourselves what we can do to a function. And what we can do is we can stretch it horizontally and we can offset it horizontally which we do with the minus. This accounts for horizontal stretching and this accounts for horizontal offset. Now we want to vertically stretch it as well and we want to vertically offset it. So we have four variables right here and we want to take an x value and we want to modify it first before it goes into the function. And this is what we will do with the intermediate one. So first we check what is the horizontal stuff. It is n2 and it is n4. Now we write exactly what we saw with the functions, which is we take the x value and we offset it by our horizontal offset right here and we multiply it by our horizontal stretch. Now the problem with this is that the origin of the, all of this is all the way down here. It's in the corner right here by default. And we want to ideally account for this by also subtracting 0.5, which will move this over here so that it's in the middle. Now intermediate two is where we will enter our equation. For example, we say logarithm of intermediate one, which is I1. Again, you can get this from the documentation. And now we will want to modify whatever we've entered so that we can also account for the vertical offset and the vertical stretching. We do this by going over here and seeing vertical stretch is number one and vertical offset is number three. And we do this by just taking whatever is output from here and we multiply it by n1 and we offset it by n3. So now we just need to modify our intermediate for expression so that it uses our modified function instead so that we can then stretch it and move it around as much as we want. And first what we want to do is we also want to offset this so that it moves our origin which we've already moved down here into the middle also up right here so that it's in the middle of the screen and now we can just add this without worrying about having here 0.5 and a 0.49. 
Okay, if you enter this, you will see that it's still a horizontal line, and this is because our multipliers right here are probably set to the to zero. If I start multiplying this, you can see that I can now move this around. I can now move this around. You can already see a bit of an issue with this, where the steeper the function is, the narrower it gets, and we will try to adjust this a bit later. What this does is it takes the y value and the current x value and it compares it to what y value there should be. And if there's only a small offset, it says it's okay and it makes it white. And in every other case, it's completely black, just as before, basically, but with a function inside of it. I hope that's clear. So now what you will notice is that this is actually the wrong way around. If I decrease this, it stretches it. And if I increase this, it compresses it. And we want it to be the other way around. And we will use a setup expression for this. So we will go in here and we will say 1 over n2. And instead of using or n2, we will use our setup 1. And now if we go in here and we enter something like a sine function, where it's always very important to remember that the program uses angles and not radians, and we will need to convert this, which is done like this. And now I can just horizontally stretch it. And obviously nothing happened. And the reason for this is if you can spot it, I entered x right here. And this means all the horizontal transformations that we added in the first expressions no longer apply. So if I enter i1 and I start modifying this, you will start seeing that this starts working. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to account for this function getting narrower, the steeper it becomes and getting thicker, the more horizontal it becomes. And this is actually kind of complicated, but we will try to compare the current pixel to a pixel next to it and ask ourselves how steep is the function at that point. And the steeper it is, the longer we make this vertical pixel line that we've now put everywhere. If you have a bunch of vertical pixel lines like this, and they always have the same length, you can immediately imagine that this distance is much shorter than this distance, even though these vertical pixel lines are the same length. So I need to adjust this so that these get longer, so that this cross section remains the same, or at least a bit better. This is what we will do next. Okay, the way this works is we want to offset by one pixel to the left, do exactly this again, and to subtract the two y values to see how much changes in the height. And if it's all the way down here, it moves one pixel, it sees a large difference in the y value by moving one pixel, and over here it sees a smaller value. And the larger this value is, the more we need to extend the thickness of the function. First, we need to be able to move by one pixel, and since fusion starts from zero and goes to one, we need to divide whatever value fusion uses by the resolution that we have. In order to do this, we go into the setup and we add another one and we say one divided by W, which tells fusion to take the width. W is defined in the reference manual and it references the width of the image. So if I enter this in here, fusion knows what to do. So now all we need to do is copy all of these steps. Now it turns out this vertical step, it doesn't really matter and it kind of adds a weird bug for some reason that I don't understand where it doesn't render re reasonably anymore. And for that reason, I will not include it and we will just skip this step. So now we need to subtract the y values from one another, which are given in these two boxes. The problem with this is that this might be negative. So we want to take the absolute so that we only know what the difference is and not whether it's positive or negative, because this might cause some issue down the line. So now we need to include this in the previous equation up here, and we need to modify our thickness by this value. First of all, I want to go away from having this as a defined value and I want to use something in here. I want to use the thickness, which is n5. So we will set this to one and we will go into the setup and we will immediately divide this by 100 so that we get more fine grain control. And we need to remember that this is S3. And now if you change the thickness in here, you can see that I'm immediately changing the thickness of the curve. The larger this difference is, the more I want this width to be multiplied. Now you might have noticed that I forgot to change this to i5, which is our modified version, which is moved by one pixel. Now you will see this is no longer getting as thin as it used to be. Now the problem is that you will see that up here, this is starting to get a bit thinner for some reason, and we need to fix that. So we will modify this a little bit, and we will remove this bit entirely, where we used to have our thickness modifier, and we will just do it all down here and then multiply with it. So first of all, we just take the maximum so that in the steeper areas, it takes whatever we just did here. And in the other areas, in the more horizontal areas, it takes the way the function used to be before we messed with it. Now you can see that this is no longer getting quite as thin, but if I keep stretching this, this is still much thinner than this line. So we need to add a thickness correction right here, and we need to try to be a bit more aggressive with it. And we will go into our intermediate expressions, and we will just multiply this to the value from the difference so, so that we can now crank this up until we start liking it. Now the issue with what we have done here is that there's obviously a very large difference between the logarithm 
maximum at zero uh, above zero slightly and right below it so you see this white line here where there's a very large difference and we want to get rid of this by adding another control which is the max thickness and we will go in we will go into the intermediate expressions and we'll just take the minimum of what we have just done here and this new value that we have just added and right now we don't see anything at all because this is set to zero so we start extending this a little bit and we go down with the thickness correction a little bit and we take the thickness down a little bit and you can see that this is starting to look a lot better now if i want to enter a new function then every single time what i have to do is something like this i have to enter it here i have to write down i1 instead of x right we need to remember that else our horizontal controls don't work anymore and in the case of trigonomic functions we need to again convert to radians and as you as you see me switch this between i1 and i5 which is effectively turning it on and off you can see that right now this is getting very very thin and if i enter i5 which it turns this back on you can see that this is getting fixed so now we have a way to create these functions and we can move them around whatever way we want we can horizontally stretch it like this and we can move it and we can do whatever we want and we can have fun and it's nice and easy so now all i need to do is i need to create a macro so that i don't need to do this again because it was not very easy for whatever reason it was actually kind of complicated and all you have to do is go here create macro and now this is already selected by default and we just select all of our controls and select all of our controls and also all of the first three setups and the first seven intermediates and also all the channels and now what you immediately see that is that it's not working at all and i'm not quite sure how to fix it so i will copy out all of these bits of code and then this can be created in like a minute or so so the way to remove the macro is to just click on something and say create macro and now click on save and don't actually save it but click up here and copy this and then you can find the right folder which is this by just copying it right here and now we can just delete this macro because it's not working and then you haven't created a useless macro for no reason all right this was the complete clusterfuck sorry for that i will come i will copy all of the stuff that you need into the description so that you have an easy time getting this whenever you need all right see you